next thing I want to do is I'm going to connect the APM to Mission Planner on the laptop there and uh, we are going to do the live calibration and uh, just check the firmware if it does require a firmware up, up, update. What you're going to need is obviously a battery. Uh, this is just a temporary uh, place where I'm putting the battery until my inverted mount comes. And it's just enough just to power the APM so it doesn't make a noise all the time. Because if you connect this to your mission plan and you don't have a battery connected, it beeps the whole time. It's going to drive you insane. So the other thing you're also going to need is a preferably a long USB cable. I've got a very, very long cable here. Let's plug in the quadcopter. Uh, just the other thing that you're also going to need, you are going to need your transmitter. So keep your transmitter close by because we are also going to be doing a calibration of our transmitter. So I'm just going to keep that on side. Right, it's ready. It is not on. I don't have props on. Please, guys, when you're connecting to Mission Planet, it is always a good idea not to have props connected. You may have an accidental arming and prop spinning and you might damage yourself. All right, I've now connected it. And uh, next step before we click connect there is we go to initial setup. We select multi-rotor because that's what we will be using. I will be selecting Exocopter there because that is what I'm using. Um, and I need to oops, select my COM port here. Next. Just checking. Right. It's updating the firmware. Now that we have the firmware installed on our hexacopter, the next thing we are going to do is to run through the wizard and just do the calibrations. Now the first thing I've done is I've done a quick leveling here, I've just stuck a bit of a ruler in there because it just needed, needed a little bit of a tad to lift and I am using a level which I'm placing across the arms and I have checked that it is level on all sides. And I'm happy with that. So my quadcopter, oh my hexacopter is now level. Right, now what we need to do here is we, on the, our laptop, our PC is connect. Right now, while it's connecting, also make sure that you have your uh, transmitter handy because we are going to need that as well. Right, and the connection process is almost done. There we go. Now, it asks these uh, uh, questions. Now, we are in an X layout. Next. Now, it's going to ask for the accelerometer calibration. And we say start place your vehicle level which we currently have we have it level and we press any key now place it on its left side I'm gonna hang it like this because that is pretty much going to be level for me I press space and I put it on its right side space face it down two arms down, space, nose up, nose up, space, and then on its back, now because you've got the GPS stalk or antenna, you've got to be careful, and I'm just going to, let's see where we can find a bit of a space, um, on its back, and we press space. Right, and that has completed the calibration. Right, next step. Click next. Compass calibration. Now this requires live calibration. And 
detect that. Click OK, and we move it in all directions. Now, this is where you've got to be careful that you don't pull out your cable. Now in my case, I'm going to take it here, and I'm going to twist it around. Let's say three times or so. Right, pull it over to one of its sides. Let's say the left side. I'm going to turn it around again. It's also about three times. there at the bottom there where it says auto accept if it has enough points to determine uh, where it has the compass and if the compass is calibrated it will automatically accept it so once you've done the normal axes motions then you can start doing some random motions this just fills up all those extra points, which helps it determine where the compass point is. When uh, it feels that it has enough uh, data points collected, it will automatically accept. Now there is a YouTube example if you want to see exactly how and uh, there's a way to do this. Now I don't have battery monitors, so I'm just going to ignore this. Next. I don't have sonar installed. Next. So the next point. Well, the next thing is to do the radio endpoint calibration. And it says, please ensure your receiver is connected to your uh, autopilot and bound to your transmitter. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure all the switches are set to the top. Throttle is at the bottom. If you have the mode 2 transmitter, this one's centered. And we switch it on. And it binds automatically and from here we click continue and now you'll see that uh, when you throttle up here it'll actually show there and your movements here will indicate there but this is not the calibration you actually have to click on calibrate radio down here okay it's going to give you a warning, ensure that your transmitter is on and receiver is powered and connected. Right, make sure obviously you don't have any props. Click OK. Now we're going to click OK and move all the points. Right, now this is where we are going to set the actual end point. So now that's throttle up, throttle down. We're going to do your left, your right to the bottom, your left, your right and do a circle that just makes sure everything on your radio is at its maximums and the same for this lever full up, full right so it's pitch forward, pitch rear, roll left, roll right okay and that is pretty much that now, you can also do your switches. Pick up the switches. So, fiddle with all your switches, forward and backward. And then just put them back in their top positions. You can even do your knobs if your knobs are connected anyway. 
in this case they are not, but if they were, then you would do them as well. And that is pretty much that. Once you've uh, done that, then the next thing is to click here when done. All right, ensure all the sticks are centered. Obviously, this, but not the throttle. The throttle has to be at the bottom. And click OK. And your offsets will be saved or endpoints. And OK, that's it. So we click Next. Now, yeah. We can set the mode, uh, the flight mode selection. On the flight mode selection, yeah, you're going to select your flight modes. And um, what I must note, okay. Now, here's something specifically for the Radio Link AT10 guys, the guys who have this radio. Now I'm going to bring it in here so that you can see it, and I am going to toggle my switches. Currently. I've got it set up for my switch D and my switch G at the top. Okay, so switch G at the top and switch D on the front. And if I switch this one down once, it's going to go to loiter. And if I pull G up once, it's going to go to position hold. Pull up once more and it goes to land. Both back to the top, leave this one to the top, pull it down once, it's at um, altitude hold, pull it out, up again, and that's file safe, uh, file safe or RTL return to launch. Now, I have to show you how that is set up. Oh, sorry, that uh, switch C shouldn't have been changed. Um, and just switch it back. Now, on the AT10 controller, how are you going to set that up? Is by selecting mode. So you press mode, hold it in, advanced menu, select attitude, select change your channel to channel 5. Whichever channel that is, change it to 5. Switch 3 to switch G and selection switch 2, you select to switch D. That will then set up these exactly as I have them. Right, you can end, end, and when you now select them, you will see that it selects your flight modes. If you have any questions regarding that or you need screenshots of this process, just give me a, a comment and uh, I will get in touch with you to explain this process again. Right, now that's done. We're going to select next. Right, now the next thing, and our very last thing, is can you arm the autopilot? Now, obviously, don't do this if you have props connected. Here it is. I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to arm. And once I arm it, here we go. It's armed, and on the laptop, it'll, it'll go green. So, yes, we can arm. Just arm that again, and click Next safe options um, but for now I'm happy with that as is I'm not going to enable the geofence next some more information if you need finish and that is it we are pretty much ready to fly